Indiana Jones, Indiana Jones. It's a podcast about Indiana Jones. Every movie, one minute at a time. Indiana Jones, Minute. Welcome back to the Indiana Jones Minute. This is the podcast where the film Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade goes the way of the dodo one minute at a time. I'm Tom Taylor. I'm Pete Mowrit. I'm Gerald Christopher St. Ludmilla of Bohemia, protector against lava lamps and ineffective crystals. (laughs) Wait, what? Uh, Why do you need protection (laughs) against a lava lamp? And when was the lava lamp invented that it's got a saint? (laughs) <laughs> I was just, I was just playing around. Oh. Get it? You know, she's Ludmilla of Bohemia. You know oh. I mean? Probably like if, if you got too, yeah, yeah. You know, oh, uh, if, if if you got too many beads, <laughs> that type of thing. <laughs> Batik and tie dye. Uh-huh. Protector, protector against patchouli. You know, there is no protection against patchouli. There's no, <laughs> there isn't. Perhaps close. Actually, uh, she, uh, she <laughs> was, yes, that's close. She was a, uh, a princess, uh, yeah, I think a Hungarian princess. Hmm. There's a whole bit about her online. You can look it up. <laughs> oh, great. There's homework. <laughs> hmm. Porter? Oh, Porter, thank you, yes. <laughs> My bad. My name is Song Riddle, Song Sanctuary Riddle, Song Sanctuary, not Anthony Riddle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also not a lot of other things, but for now, I'll just be not Anthony. Bravo. Uh, <laughs> I, I am Rachel Noel Fox. That's enough, uh, I think, religion in my name for a name. <laughs> I don't need more. Well, welcome back, guys. We haven't seen you since the uh, literal uh, Temple of Doom, back in the Temple of Doom. Yeah, from one temple to another. That was a, lo- a long time ago. Wow, good point. Uh, yeah, yeah, hey, that's true. Yeah. yeah. This was not planned. I mean, this was totally planned. We got a theme <laughs> going here. Of course. Have this thing buttoned down. Um, but yeah, thanks for joining us again. We're going to talk about minute 103 of Last Crusade now. And 103 begins with the worst <laughs> line in the movie. And it ends with Donovan <laughs> telling Indy at gunpoint that Indy is going to get the grail for him. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm, I'm puzzled, but I, apparently the worst line is I never expected to see you again. Well, you know which one I mean. <laughs> no. But I, this, I, I, I'm curious when she says that. Did she? Is this true? That she never expected to see him again? Yeah, I, I don't think it's true, first of all. But what happened to the Nazis after the tank went over the side? Like, did they just drive off and not bother to see if anybody survived or what happened? Or because it seems like they would have come over and said, "Hey, Henry and Sala and Marcus are still here. Let's take them captive again, or something." It seems weird that they would just drive off. The only Nazi yeah. left, I think, was Vogel, wasn't he? Because I think, like early on in that whole tank chase, Donovan and Elsa's car just peeled off. Although, where are those other Nazis from then that are here now? Exactly. No, look, look, That's a look. Good exactly. Question. This is yeah. No, there's. I think it's okay. So there's the there's the Nazi truck that blew up. Then Fogel and the <laughs> and D Day are in the tank. They're dead. <laughs> and you know, um, Donovan and Elsa and the driver kind of break off. Mm-hmm. And then later on, we see a bunch of Hatay soldiers. So I guess some of the Hatay soldiers didn't get wrapped up in the fracas. I guess. But I, I, I'm completely with you, Pete. It makes no sense. I mean, Donovan even has binoculars. So yeah. if he's, like, watching, he sees the tank go over, and he might say to himself, well, uh, that's the demise of Indiana Jones. Fine. <laughs> but oh, then sure. he's just going to watch. Yeah, he's going to watch Sala and Marcus and Henry, and then he's going to see Indiana Jones climb up. Yeah. And he's going to see a beautiful honey bear reunion. Unless it's like good old fashioned bad guy hubris, and he never looks back because he's you know, uh, you know, our guys will take care of the good guys, and you know, I'll just keep my binoculars pointed forward, looking for the crescent moon, whatever. But I think that's why in that deleted scene when he's looking through the binoculars, I think he does see Indy, and I think oh, that's why I think that's why he's he that's why Elsa grabs the binoculars from him, and I think mm. she knows that she's going to see him again. I think she's just lying here, but oh, I think, okay. But she, I I don't understand. So does she, does did they watch? See, it makes no sense. If they watched Indy go over the cliff in the tank, then they would also be 
watching Marcus and Sala and Henry. Yeah. Like the horse is right next to the tank. Maybe the goal was to actually get them to go to the temple and then surprise them so that they could get Indy to do like maybe Donovan and oh. intended to do this the whole time. You know, he's like, we need somebody to oh. go through the slicey bit. Ooh, yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, yes. Running out of the soldiers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He's like their insurance policy. He does seem pretty like dead set on Indy being the guy to go get the grail for him for some reason. Yeah. Like, I forget if it's this minute or the next minute, but uh, yeah, that, right, that makes yeah. a lot of sense. A Xanatos gambit, if you will. Excellent. Yeah. But the, I mean, but she, <laughs> it still doesn't make sense. I mean, so she's fibbing. Like, yeah. I never thought, you know, I never expected to see you again. It's like, really? Yeah, I mean, I, I get it if she does it if she thinks he died on the tank, but then they just, I guess, you know, it's I don't know, eleven seconds later he climbs back <laughs> up. Maybe she's not talking about right then. Right. Like maybe she's like, I never oh, expected to see you again a couple days ago when I saw you again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How many more times do I get to see you? <laughs> oh wait, I've got something. I've got something. I oh. think, and I just I just thought of this. There's a lot coming up in the next like five minutes that mirrors Raiders of the Lost Ark. Mm, and yeah. my thesis is because this was going to be the last movie. And I think it calls back a lot to Raiders of the Lost Ark oh. like, to mirror the first movie. Mm. Right. And is this is this maybe a callback to Marion in her bar? Oh. I'm not expecting to see oh, right. Andy turn up. Yeah. Wow. She's got two shot glasses next to her head and she tosses them <laughs> to the floor. Yeah. And... Oh, wait. We just learned those aren't shot glasses. Yeah. You know, I didn't fully read that thing, but it's weird. Like the guy says she's holding snowballs. She Boy, went out. Weird. There's apparently a deleted scene in Raiders where she goes outside and picks <laughs> up two snowballs to hold against her temples. Oh. And then she throws them down. But you couldn't. They cut the, that scene. So they put in the sound of breaking glass. So you'd think they were shot glasses. That's hysterical. <laughs> Are you wow. joking me? <laughs> no. If you pause it, you can see that she's got like snowballs in her hand. Do we have to go back and redo Raiders now when we learn stuff? Like yeah, this? I think so. Can we it. please? <laughs> yeah, from the beginning. Yeah. Wow. Are you guys going to do the the Young Indiana Jones after uh, this movie? Since this is the last Indiana Jones movie, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got to do something, I guess. And no. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I'm very excited to hear uh, my friend Tom Taylor so furious. <laughs> oh, yeah. Indy says, uh, yeah. I'm like a bad penny. I always turn up. And okay, I but just, hang on. I, hang I on. I just want to okay. say, it, say it like he says it. Uh, does he say, I'm like a bad penny? Yeah. yeah. I'm like yeah. a bad yeah. penny. I always turn up. Yeah. Wait, wait. Uh-huh. Pete, can you do it? Can you do it? Uh, Probably not. He, he no, it has it. more low end song. Can you do it? I'm like a bad penny. I always turn up. Yeah, that's I just pretty wind good. up sounding like yeah. Lando. You sound yeah. just like Lando. <laughs> <It really laughs> like Lando. I'm like a bad penny. I always turn up. <laughs> I'm turning up, Chewbacca. <laughs> Wait, look, Rachel, you get you get an at bat. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> I'm like a bad penny. I always turn up. He's so <laughs> angry about it when he says yeah. it, too. Like, I've never yeah. heard anyone say that, like, old-timey kind of phrase with such venom and conviction, <laughs> yeah. you know? It's not meant to be an attack. It's just like a goofy little thing. Yeah. He First of all, he does that. His nose is a little stuffed up, and his voice is way too low. He's like, I'm like a bad penny. I always show up. <laughs> He's like Stallone and Cobra. <laughs> hey, you know what he says? You know what he says here? He says, he goes... I know what you're thinking, punk. <laughs> In all this chaos. <laughs> yeah. Did he shoot five bullets or six? <laughs> well, there's, that, there's that deleted scene where Donovan's like, wait, I got to know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> That's my favorite line from any movie. It's so, yeah. All the wrong reasons. Yep. It's, so, it's super dirty hairy. Yeah, it's super it dirty hairy. Except dirty yeah. hairy had like writers and stuff. And like yeah. memorable original dialogue, <laughs> like what? I mean, I this, this I'm a bad penny. I always turn up. I just want to spend the rest of the movie just me and Jerry punching each other in the face. You know, <laughs> like it's not our fault that this line is in the movie, but I'd I feel that. like that we should go through this. I'd, I'd, I'd enjoy watch. seeing that after this podcast too. I, oh I, yeah, I, well, I, just a three-way punchathon. 
No, no, it was you and Jerry punching yeah. each other. <laughs> oh, with, with, with Pete liking yeah. it because he likes everything. Yeah, Pete with a I, big tub of popcorn. I actually made a note of, uh, about this line. I, I actually really like this line, <gasps> and, and I know oh. it. I know it's I terrible. Know. I know it's punch it. song. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> good luck doing that. <laughs> 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 it's a really hackneyed line, uh, and it's hackneyed because it's it's an old it's an old timey sort of well, what do you call those like uh no there must be some sort of ism that that thing is called like an aphorism or a yeah like a, a rejoinder yeah. I still what is the rejoinder it's, <laughs> it's such a great word I don't, on know, lot. But, I don't either you know like because of when this takes place it it feels like when i watch that and he says that it feels like like Spielberg was like, oh, I get to use this like hackney old line, hackneyed old line <laughs> uh-huh. from the forties, but in earnest because it was new yeah. for Indiana Jones. Right. Yeah. For yeah. All we know he invented yeah. it. That's right. It's like Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, now this is uh, this is for for you, Peter. Uh-huh. I'm I'm wondering, is that line a direct reference to Indy stealing Elsa's good luck charm, and oh. now he's her personal. Bad luck charm. Huh. <laughs> Indy's kind of like a duppy. Like in the Caribbean, there's, you know, a malevolent spirit or ghost is called a duppy, and they just, like, they haunt you. Mm-hmm. And I'm wondering if that's kind of what he's, he, it's like he stole her good luck charm, and now he's just going to keep turning up. I think you're close. Because <laughs> I, I never understood what this meant. Like, it never made sense. Like, I never understood what this line meant. Like, I, the line didn't bother me in the movie, but I never under, knew what it meant. Um, and so I did a little bit of research and a bad penny is something they've been talking about since the 14th century when it showed up in, uh, <laughs> William Longland's prose poem, Piers Plowman. And a, a bad wow. penny refers to a counterfeit penny or what they would call a clipped penny. And back then they didn't really, when they minted coins, they weren't, you know, uniformly round. So people would clip the edges of them and they would take the, basically kind of shavings off the edge of the coins and make melt them down and make new coins wow oh, and wow. then whoever got the coin after them would get a smaller you know a less valuable coin hmm. so basically you were gaining money from the person you know that you clipped the coin from and then the next person you gave it to would be screwed and i think the idea with this expression is that if you're dishonest and disreputable, like if you clip coins eventually that coin is going to come back to you in payment and you're going to get screwed yourself I, so it's I, like I, bad karma that's I had really a, that's a lot deeper lot than I thought. Yeah, I, I had assumed that a bad yeah. penny was like a uh, like trick dice, right. and like with trick dice, if you throw yeah. trick oh, yeah. dice, oh, yeah. you always yeah. get snake eyes, and if you have a oh, bad heads. penny, yeah. then oh, you're always going to get That's his. Yeah, and so well. if it's a if it's a trick penny for like gambling, then it's always going to turn up because that's what you want. So right. it's always going to be heads. That's what I always thought as well, yeah. and, I, and I always thought like like it was a pun. Right. And it yeah. Might exactly. That. Yeah. That's, that's what I that's what I thought as well. Huh. Yeah. What I, like I don't that. understand about that though is if you're the owner of the bad penny uh-huh. and it's always snake eyes and you know how the you, you know proverbial snake eyes or heads mm-hmm. it always shows up heads whatever and it's then isn't it a good penny? <laughs> right for you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that's what I'm yeah. saying. Like I, I understand you're cheating, but you're cheating <laughs> in your favor. <laughs> right. I mean, isn't that where you're like, oh no, I'll tell you what, heads I win, you know. <laughs> that that would uh, one might even say that might be your good luck charm right he should have said i'm like my lucky penny i always turn up or like i'm like that right. yes lucky penny yes. for me that i gave to you to use <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> yeah. see i get that i'm like your lucky pe- i'm like a lucky penny uh-huh. i always yeah. turn up right that's I, that's beautiful but let's let's be clear this is not like an original line to this movie this is a saying this is like yeah, a turn of phrase. Like, yeah. You would you like you know? Yeah. It was like yeah, like we said, yeah. like from the forties. And it sounds like it's right out of a film noir. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Yes, but it uh, it doesn't though. I mean, I, I agree with Song <laughs> that it was probably like, oh, why not use these you know phrases that were going around at the time and like because that's when this movie takes place. But it like it it, it it's the only maybe it's because it's the only thing like that in the entire series. Maybe right. That's like you know kind of like you know t- turn of phrase from the time. So it just sounds like he's like being a dad or something, like just kind of like weak, kind of nothing jab at humor or something. 
And it's a yeah. It, it's, it, it's, it's it is. It's a. It's a very yeah. It's like, wait, why you know, didn't you end... write a line? Why didn't you write a line of dialogue for the movie that you were hired to write? That's really weird. <laughs> <laughs> that seems lazy. It's 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 one of those my in, my my uh, indelibrium is off. Yeah, yeah. It does. It this does not sound anything like Indiana Jones. And right. I'm I'm not even sure that's Harrison Ford saying. <laughs> it's ADR. <laughs> They yes. recorded that in the studio. It's Vic Armstrong. It, it, it doesn't sound like his voice. It's like, it's it just, I don't know if, if it's the delivery, it's just the tone of it. It doesn't sound like Harrison Ford. He's a little weird in this whole scene, actually. He is. Yeah. yeah. I noticed that. Yeah. And what's, what's really strange is usually when Indy is caught or captured or whatever, we either see him like... You know, he's either going to grab a machine gun and take everybody by surprise and mow people down into chandeliers and watch little roses fly up <laughs> as their souls, or he's <laughs> going to, like, pull out a bullwhip and uh, directly yeah. go into action. But it's very, very strange. Occasionally, we see him just completely capitulate or surrender. He's like, you got me. You got me. Well, it might be that gaping head wound he's he's suffering from right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah really. It covers half of his face. I noticed. Right. Yeah, I no, did notice that. But here he's just sort of sitting there. He's just like, you know, he's like, you know, shooting me isn't going to solve anything. He kind of does. You were mentioning that there's like, you feel like there's callbacks to uh, Raiders in this scene, like a five, five uh-huh. minutes, five minutes of callbacks. Uh, uh-huh. He does something here when Donovan starts on his little spiel about, you know, uh, the Nazis and Hitler and so on and the dodo. Uh, he doesn't mm. look at Donovan <laughs> at Donovan. Like Donovan starts walking and then he just sort of stares off into space. And it, watching mm. that, it reminded me of in Raiders when Sala is introducing him to Mr. Uh, Mr. Katanga on the boat. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like Indy, that entire scene, Indy looks in a completely different direction while Mr. Katanga talks to him. And I remember like watching that over the years thinking like, wait, is, is Indy not talking to that guy because he's a racist? You know, like oh wow, like is he not? Is he is is he upset because he doesn't want to like, you know, be on the same level as like an African guy or something? That's just you know that's those are my hangups about like you know like, uh-huh. grow, grow, <laughs> sure. yeah. growing up black. You wind up with a lot of hangups. It's just one of those things. Sure, and they're, they're kind of things like that. You always wind up have, having to think about these things. But, um, God, I didn't notice that when when Donovan, yeah, yeah, no, I, yeah, I know what you're talking all. about. I, I I notice it. Yeah, but. Right here, when Donovan starts kind of walking around him, talking, Indy is looking off. Like, his eyes are facing where Donovan was almost the whole time. And then Donovan Mm -hmm. sort of passes in front of the camera, so you can't see Indy. And when he comes back around, Indy has turned around. And he's, I think he's looking at Marcus at that point. And they're making, like, a face Mm -hmm. at each other. But he's, (laughs) he's he's never watching Donovan. Like, he's never, like, there's no eye contact there. That's you know, interesting because I, I yeah. noticed that because that that makes me think of British stage stuff like in in in, mm. in thing, old things like uh-huh. uh, like Doctor Who or or uh, Blake Seven. It's all very theatrical and, and British. And so there's lots of scenes with people standing kind of close to each other, but not looking at each other, like standing almost in front of each other, but stand, like staring off into the distance and showing their emotions to the invisible audience and not actually interacting with each other. And I noticed that in this minute and the following there was a lot of that and and also weirdly british you were saying that he didn't sound like uh, harrison ford n- normally when he uh-huh. says a nazi stooge like you there's something the way he says it almost sounds like he's trying to say it in british phrasing which i thought yeah. was weird almost yeah. like uh star wars princess leia like yeah. Yeah. Tarkin or something yeah yeah, yeah. it was like a faky sort of regalness or something the, the way the accent was in the phrasing just seemed slightly off like it was British and also in the following minute which we can talk about later there was weird I, I felt this a similar thing with the way people were like staring out and not looking at each other and just like uh, showing their faces to the the screen and not to each other as actors yeah huh and he's also got that fake laugh he's got that like uh you know, derisive laugh. Right. Where he's yeah. like, huh, Nazi stooge yeah. like you or whatever. And that, that he, yeah. he had one of those in the Temple of Doom, didn't he? He did like a ha or something at Mola Ram or something. It rang really false and it kind of does here yeah. too. It's, it's, hmm. well, just, it's not I mean, his thing. Before we right. unpack this or while we unpack this, I, I'd like to read the entire quote because this is one of the, you know, Donovan's 
you know, moment oh, yeah. here. Yeah, we get we get insight into uh, why he's searching for the Grail. So what he says is, you know, I'm still totally confused by this. <laughs> I, okay, but I'll, I'll read it just so we're all on the same page. Donovan says, the Nazis. The Nazis want to write themselves into the Grail legend. Take on the world. Well, they're welcome. But I want the <laughs> Grail itself. The... <laughs> <laughs> the, the cup that gives everlasting life. It's like Hitler can have the world, but he can't take it with him. I'm going to be drinking my own health when he's gone the way of the dodo. And by the way, he's saying this all in front of Nazis. That's what right. I was thinking as well. Like, they don't care that he's yeah. just right. slagging yeah. off yeah. Hitler? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, But it's really... there's. A million strange things about this. One yeah. of which mm -hmm. is there's going to be a Nazi who's going to say, hey, boss, this Donovan guy is right. a good point. Yeah. yeah, We can't take the world with us. Gee. <laughs> yeah. As a matter of fact, I think he's going to keep that little cup. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's there's that. And then, uh, like, if what are the Nazis backing if Donovan's going to get to keep the grail? Right. Like, right. Well, what do they oh, get out of point. writing themselves into the grail history that's not... Yeah, yeah. It's that? almost like they're gonna write, like, have a. They're gonna publish it in Nature, or si you know, science. <laughs> right, like, right. Gonna, like, <laughs> right. Yeah, we found and then gave up the Grail. That's yes. our yeah. claim to fame. <laughs> or does it, I mean, they're just gonna be like in an illuminated manuscript, <laughs> right? Somewhere, and then you know, once yeah. upon a time, a professor who hated office hours was coerced into <laughs> retrieving the Grail. I yeah, mean, the way, I, the way I Donovan's talking <laughs> is, it almost sounds like he's thinking that. Hitler and the Nazis are going to get something from the Grail, almost like an arc-like power or something, something that would mm -hmm. that would do that would help them conquer the world. But then, meanwhile, Donovan has the Grail. Like, would he let Hitler drink from the Grail? And then right, he, yeah. Like, would he let Hitler drink from it? But clearly not, because he said Hitler would be dead and gone, and he would be. Yeah, yeah. That's what doesn't make sense. Why would Hitler be going after the Grail if he's not going to drink out of it? Right. Maybe right. those Nazis that are there have already aligned themselves with Donovan. Yeah, the whole time that I was just wondering um, why, yeah. why wouldn't they just yeah. turn on him? But I, I did think of this. He likens uh, Hitler. He says he's going to go the way to the dodo. And I thought, well, the dodo is flightless. Mm -hmm. And it's gray and brown. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> because Hitler can't fly. What? <laughs> Are you saying, yeah, Hitler can't fly? What's going on? Yeah, exactly. Maybe he's just saying, you know, that Hitler guy, he can't fly. <laughs> Watch your mouth, Gary. <laughs> or maybe it's it has something to do with the like, about. like, the, like with the Luftwaffe or something. Like maybe <laughs> they're going to become on? flightless. <laughs> Did you have a stroke? Jerry's Jerry? making all these really good points, and then he kind of <laughs> went all flightless. I'm just being Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> I actually looked up dodos. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I started to. Yeah. I was like, wait, was the dodo actually extinct when he said this? Right. <laughs> was the dodo oh, wow. actually a Nazi? <laughs> no, I was going to say, like, I said in my notes, it says, without looking it up, I'm going to say yes, based on that Porky Pig cartoon from the 30s. Right. <laughs> Which I then looked right. up and I found out that they made that exact same cartoon twice. Porky and really? Piggy Land, directed by Robert Clampett in 1938. <laughs> <laughs> and then Doe for the Dodo, directed by Fritz Freeling, in 1949. And they're Wait, identical, now. except one's in color. <laughs> now who's Marcus? <laughs> no, hey, I'm trying to track down the Dodo. I got the last Dodo. I got the last Dodo. We all know what we're talking about. <laughs> dodo, Dodo, Dodo. We'll yeah. Well, so we, so we posited this. They're going to get, the Nazis get the grail, and they line up everybody, like on different <laughs> right. days, like different corps or teams or, you know, artillery units on Monday, you know, every everybody in the Army, Navy, at Luftwaffe, Marines, <laughs> drink, drinks from the grail, and all Nazis get everlasting life, and then they can do whatever they want, and they have a strong army, and Hit, and Hitler drinks from it too, and then you're like... Everybody gets the flu, but they never die. Right. They get some sort of, yeah, some sort of, you know, uh, communicable disease. I mean, apparently you still age, but you just don't die. Right. Or and then Donovan gets to keep it after the entire German empire and army gets to drink from it? Yeah, that doesn't sound like Hitler's style. That's no, it doesn't. No. Yeah. Super cooties, man. Who wants to drink out of that? <laughs> yeah, really. Wipe that thing off. Ooh, Uber cooties. <laughs> Uber cooties. <laughs> Uber allus. <laughs> and and does 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 Donovan? So does he think that he's just going to screw over Hitler here? 
Is it, it like a double like crossing thing? Yeah. yeah, but he's saying that in front of all the Nazis. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that one Nazi's super, like, super Nazi. He's holding his gun like he's got it out, his pistol outstretched, and his arms like super yeah. ready to fight. Like he's maybe those guys don't speak English. Oh, that's a good point. Maybe they don't maybe. speak English. Oh. No. But I would think maybe maybe one or two of the guys might understand what Donovan's saying. Or maybe did somebody just say that maybe these are like Donovan's actual guys. Like maybe these guys right. are loyal to Donovan and not Hitler. Or yeah, something. yeah, that's possible. Interesting. Yeah. It could have been. Better. I mean, I would think that one of them would just like shoot Donovan. <laughs> <laughs> right. And be like, no, I'm. I heard. I heard his little speech. There's a lot of people <laughs> there that could shoot Donovan. Yeah, yeah. a lot of guns. Yeah. Huh. No one has the guts. <laughs> I really love how bedraggled everyone looks, and then Donovan shows up, and he's in his perfect like polyester blue suit, buttoned all the way up to the top, yeah, and everyone yeah. else is yeah. like messed up. He looks like he could yeah. be drinking a martini. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does. He is cool as a cucumber. <laughs> yeah. That's because he spent so much time on Hoth. Ah ha ha! Yeah, oh, exactly. Yes. What uh, at second thirty six? I'm dying to know this. What does Donovan eat off of his fingers? <laughs> oh, I didn't notice that. That happens. <laughs> oh, oh yes, yeah. Oh right. Maybe yeah. that's a callback to uh, like to, chewing on his to Belloc eating the bug. Maybe it's just all callbacks. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Maybe, yeah. He's like he, he looks. He looks down. I'm watching. He looks down at his index right. finger. Like yeah. he inspects it, and then he mm-hmm. eats something off of his. finger. Anger. No, he just rubs. He just rubs it on his upper lip. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a pensive Linus Van Pelt sort of gesture. <laughs> See, I think it's a. I, you know what? I think it's a booger. Maybe. Uh, yeah. Maybe a booger. I want to yeah. barf. Don't talk about boogers. We just lost half our audience. <laughs> and a third of your hosts. <laughs> yeah. Pete will not be heard for the rest of the episode. But he, you know what? He he says something, uh, and this never happened before for me until watching these minutes over and over again. He says, "The Grail is mine," and I immediately went into the doggone Grail is mine. mine, mine. <laughs> it's been stuck in Wait, my is head. Is that the second days. time that song has come up on this show? Oh, because Belloc says that in Raiders. He says, the girl was mine. Oh, that's right. right. immediately got the same that's song. Right. Yeah. See, another callback. That's right. Wow. Oh. Wow. Oh, wow. Wow. That's getting crazy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, do you have anything else for 103? Yes. Yes. Oh, cool. Johnny Two <laughs> Hats. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. They're here. all the Two Hat guys. All those guys have oh, Two do, Hats yeah. on. <laughs> and it's like, there was oh, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's like a. Yeah, I don't it seems know, unnecessary. Have you ever seen the? There's a show called The Mighty Boosh from England. It was a sort of like a, I think it went on for three seasons. But it was a this weird sort of surreal comedy show uh, with Julian Barrett and Noel Fielding and that crop of guys that were popular in British comedy in like the the early two thousands, like two thousand three to like two thousand ten. Uh, but in one of the episodes, they. The, the two main characters join a band and the leader of the band is this guy that calls himself Johnny Two Hats. And and he's like a like a really vi- like it's him. It's like an electro pop band, like an 80s electro pop band. It's like Johnny Two Hats and there's these two girls who are always threatening him with physical violence, you know, like you better play what you're told or else we're going to stab you up. You know, like that kind of stuff. So at, <laughs> at one point, the guy the guy is trying to intimidate one of the characters. He's like, you know why they call me Johnny Two Hats? And his response is, uh, I don't know. Let me guess. It's because you wear two hats, you know, and he's got like two hats on all the time. And the whole time I was watching, I kept thinking like, you know, why? why are they, it seems like overkill, you know, like they've got the wrap around their head already and there's a fez and on there's top. A fez. You know? yeah. Right. Like yeah. they were at a baseball cap. How do they even know they're the wearing the second hat? Right. You know? <laughs> yeah. How do you know if it blows off? I, w- yeah. I wondered if one was for function and one was for fashion. <laughs> Which one though, Jerry? <laughs> I can't tell. They're both so handsome. Yeah. Well, we did see all. Uh, we know that the hallmark of the Brotherhood of the Cruciform Sword are the red fezes. So maybe yeah. these guys are showing, hey, we're actually part of the Brotherhood. Ah. Or maybe they they pick those up off the dead brethren of yeah. the Cruciform oh, yeah. Sword. Like, hey, look at yeah. those. We got free hats. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, maybe the they all need is. to. Uh, they all have to repay. <laughs> you use them to repay their brother-in-laws. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, they lost their brother-in-law's hats. Like it's like when you go to a, a baseball game and it's free hat night and you're already wearing a hat, so you just spend no. the evening wearing two hats. You don't have a pocket to put it in, you know. Maybe yeah. you don't have any pockets <laughs> there. So, well, let's just wear them for the time being. Right. And, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, oh. speaking of something. Wait, I have something. Sorry. Uh, I noticed that uh, the statue, the very last moments of this minute, um, the statue behind Indy's shoulder is... A mm-hmm. striking resemblance of the night to come. To night come so. night yeah. with a K. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I, I had never noticed that before. There's other figures that you see in the background at different points in that in that room. But at, at that moment, uh-huh. the statue behind India's shoulder looks very much like the night. He has the same, like, droopy mustache. And he, he looks <laughs> exactly, like, very yes, much. And yeah, it's, a, it it's a foreboding that I had never noticed before. Huh. I guess he had a lot of time on his hands. Right. right. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, he's got a thousand years. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, are those spoilers? Oh, yeah, maybe I <laughs> no, 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 no such thing. Yeah, no such thing. Um, but speaking of being spoiled, uh, <laughs> hey, this just in. My sister, get it? Boom, 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 boogers. Uh, <laughs> two hats. Wow. <laughs> this just in from Professor Christy Porter. Oh. Coming over the wire. Hot. Oh, why, of course. I mean, what, what did anyone really expect? I'm like a bad penny. <laughs> Do people use cliches when they're stressed out? Is Indy stressed out here? See, normally he's not. Normally he doesn't use cliches yeah. when he's stressed out. He says something clever like, ha, 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 son of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Well, it does say right here, boop, boop, boop. Can you think of any other cliches Indy uses? Oh. Hmm. I really don't know. Yeah. It's actually a very good question because we're just uh, saying, no, that's why this doesn't work. He's not a yeah. cliche type of guy. I'll see you in hell. Is that a cliche? Ooh. Does that not He doesn't count? even say that. He, no, even that's a little more, he's, he's prepared, prepared to, to meet Kali, Kali in hell. Yeah, yeah it's all right. Yeah. yeah. Which is, yeah. you know, well, I'll see you in hell is from Empire Strikes from. Back. <laughs> right. Oh, we'll sing right. guy. But right. that's, a, that's yeah. admissible. Yes, that admissible. Is, yeah. Yeah. Dream theory. <laughs> I was going to ask, are you saying the same guy because this is the fever dream? Right, yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. I guess. Well, he does go, yeah. <laughs> when he start, when he starts a horse up, it's a word, it's a, it's right. a thing, it's a command. That's, that's kind a, of a cliche. He says right? lots of words in English too. He says, you know, it's a, hello. <laughs> Sometimes you wish you'd use a cliche instead of some of the clunky things he says in this movie. But... <laughs> wow, yeah, I can't think of any. I know, me neither. I mean, it's... It's yeah. going to keep me yeah. up tonight. I'll probably wake up in the middle of the night. Yeah. yeah, I will too. Yeah, we'll put... You know what? We'll post that on the on the, uh, on the the listener's crusade. If anybody would like to, uh, uh, you know, proffer up uh, examples of, of Indiana Jones cliches, please yeah. do. Yeah. Yeah. There's probably or one two, uh, that we're forgetting. I'm sure there's a... Yeah, I bet you there's like one or two. You eat them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's what's gonna happen people are gonna put some stuff like that and be like no 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 that's not a cliche that's 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 become one on our listeners crusade exactly yeah that's <laughs> because we that's love the big them. cliche when they wrote the movie yes <laughs> <laughs> all right well we've done it with 103 uh thank you song and rachel this has been awesome well, thank you Thanks for having joining us. us today and if you if you if you had fun we think maybe you should come back tomorrow we would love to Beautiful. Hooray. Awesome. Hooray. <laughs> Everybody flip your bad pennies in the air. <laughs> They're going to come up snake eyes. <laughs> um, is there anything you guys want to uh, let the people know about that you're working on or anything or places they can find you online? You can find me at songreel.com. I'm always working on a lot of stuff. Uh, at the moment, I'm I'm spending my time doing an illustration of my, my D&D party because our campaign is coming to an end. But that's... Uh, <laughs> maybe not of great concern or interest to your listeners. <laughs> well, you never know. Uh, I, Internet and D&D. <laughs> That's true, yeah. And Song does some amazing art, by the way. Oh, like, he really oh, yeah. does. You should definitely go yeah. and check out his website. Which yeah, you is... can follow me on Instagram as yeah. well. I, I probably yeah. update the Instagram stuff more than my actual website. I'm a little flaky in that sense, but I'm always making art. I think most people are like that, though. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sure. Um, I, I can be found at rachelnoelfox.com. Same deal. I've got an Instagram as well, which you can find if you really want to. Uh, yeah. 
Excellent. So find our guests there. Find us here. Find us here tomorrow for a minute 104 of Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade here on the Indiana Jones Minute. Woo-hoo. Yay. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you, punk? <laughs> I got to know. I got to know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'd heard the the whole line, the whole like, "Well, do you, punk?" So many years before I saw that movie, and when I finally saw oh, that yeah. movie and I saw that scene, I was like, "Wait, how come this part always gets let out, left out? This is crazy." <laughs> it's a ridiculous thing for that guy to say. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.